Hello, welcome to the Friday, July 23rd, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We got an update from Microsoft regarding the summer of SAM vulnerability and the most important and really significant change here is that uh, Microsoft now has a complete list of all the operating system versions that are vulnerable. Not much has changed to the different Windows 10 versions which are essentially the more recent versions of Windows 10 but they also added a couple of Windows Server versions. When I recorded the podcast yesterday, uh, this hadn't been updated yet. Uh, So keep watching that page too from Microsoft. Maybe they'll release uh, some patch or uh, some uh, quick fix uh, for uh, this uh, problem. But Windows Server 2019 is vulnerable. The server core installation as well as uh, the regular uh, version of Windows Server 2019. Then Windows Server version 2004, only the server core installation and then also Windows Server version 20H2, also only the server core installation. So uh, these uh, server versions are effect, which are the more recent versions of Windows Server. Don't forget uh, to apply the mitigation uh, to uh, these systems as well. And it's probably even almost more important than some of the workstations. And Akamai's DNS service suffered a uh, outage today, lasted about sort of 50 minutes to half an hour and affected numerous websites around the internet. So a lot of outages were reported around that time. Uh, UPS, uh, Delta Airlines and many others were affected. Sometimes this was also considered an AWS outage, but Really, it was Akamai's DNS service and then people just couldn't resolve resources that were hosted uh, with uh, AWS. As I usually say, the internet actually works a lot better without DNS uh, because people that can't remember IP addresses can't connect to anything. But of course, DNS not working usually means this website or the resource that you're connecting to is down because you can no longer resolve the host name. As of this recording, everything should be back to normal. Akamai stated that this was a update gone wrong, so not the result of a cyber attack. Critical infrastructure like this is perfectly able to launch denial of service attacks against themselves. And well, if after all of uh, these patches and outages, you still have some time left, it's time to patch Oracle. Oracle released its critical patch update for July. 342 uh, vulnerabilities are being addressed in this update. Way too many to even quickly summarize them. But yes, there are a couple of deserialization vulnerabilities. Again, WebLogic, uh, which of course is a hacker's favorite, has uh, six different vulnerabilities addressed. Three of them have a CVSS score of 9.8 and uh, then three additional ones between 5.3 and 7.5. So definitely pay attention to WebLogic. This has been frequently attacked in the past so I'm pretty sure attackers are already reversing the patch for uh, these vulnerabilities. And then we have an update from Kaseya, a good one for the victims of the R evil ransomware attack. Uh, Kaseya did obtain a copy of the universal decryptor key for uh, this R evil attack so victims will be able to uh, decrypt uh, their files contact Kaseya if you need a copy of uh, the decryptor not clear how Kaseya obtained it uh, if there was any uh, ransom payment involved of course the R evil website that would be used uh, to contact R evil and to make ransom payment has been down now for a while So uh, not really sure. Maybe they'll eventually uh, release what exactly happened here. 
And Atlassian released a security fix for its Jira data center and Jira service management data center products. The vulnerability does expose the EH cache RMI without authentication. So this should add proper authentication to it. Of course, with any products like this that are integral to a development process, there is always the specter of a supply chain attack waiting here. And then a reminder that old vulnerabilities sadly often don't go away. SecConsult uh, took a look at some popular web applications and checked how they did DNS uh, resolution. And what they were looking for is if the source port was randomized. If you remember from years ago where Dan Kaminsky came up with this DNS spoofing trick that relied on a static source port being used by the resolver. Well, apparently this is still more common than it should be and would allow DNS spoofing and with that, for example, providing bad MX records. And that's sort of what SecConsult uh, was looking at here. Is it possible to, for example, spoof DNS and then use that uh, to inject bad MX records and, for example, redirect emails for password resets. So take a look at your web applications and make sure that the source ports for your DNS queries are sufficiently randomized. The fix is often an update to your DNS libraries or maybe picking a different uh, recursive DNS resolver uh, depends on how your setup is exactly architectured. Well, and this is it for today. So Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.